Shalom is Brother Yashima Zakar from the Israelite Times Report, IsraeliteTimes.com, upon my watch. All praises are definitely due to Yahweh by Shemi Havashah. Peace and blessings to all the brothers spread across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth and sincerity. Got my man Trump back in the news again. I want to play this clip. Trump is um, already staring up stuff. Supposedly, allegedly, he has, you know, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't taken over the White House inside joke. But um, he is already stirring up the ish, uh, distancing um, the U.S. from NATO. It's a beautiful thing because this is a part of prophecy. This is what we're watching for. This is what we're looking for. Um, He's basically telling the NATO uh, countries, if you don't pay up, he's not going to help you. He's not going to support you. Okay? The U.S. is not going to help or support them. Um, You know, if if you're not, if you're a NATO country, and he even went as far as to say, if you're a NATO country and Russia, attacks you and you haven't paid your dues or you haven't paid your bill, as he liked to say, to the U.S., then he's going to let Russia do whatever the hell they want to do to you. In other words, the U.S. is not going to help a NATO, a NATO uh, nation or country if they don't pay up to the U.S., so I'm going to go ahead and play this clip. I'm going to show you why that's important. Uh, this is Trump making this declaration. Fifty. I did the same thing with NATO. I got them to pay up. NATO was busted until I came along. I said, everybody's going to pay. They said, well, if we don't pay, are you still going to protect us? I said, absolutely not. They couldn't believe the answer. And everybody, you never saw more money pour in to Secretary General Stoltenberg well, I don't know if he is anymore, but he was my biggest fan. He said, all these presidents came in, they'd make a speech, they'd leave, and that was it. And they all owed money, and they wouldn't pay it. I came in, I made a speech, and I said, you got to pay up. They asked me that question. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay, you're delinquent. He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bill. Now, you heard the clip for yourself, and Trump is literally telling (laughs) NATO, look, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to back you. If Russia attacks you and you haven't paid us, would you owe us, meaning the U.S.? Because Trump is supposed to be uh, America first, right? If you don't pay us what you owe us, then you get no help. You get no support from the U.S. Because uh, what Trump is complaining about, uh, he's basically saying that the U.S., uh, these NATO countries rely on the U.S. too much militarily, um, and they're not paying up. In other words, the U.S. isn't getting what they deserve. They're not getting their kickback. All right. So this came from U.S. News. Um, it says here, and this is the website, U.S. News. Uh, actually, it's by Reuters. But it says, explainer, what did Trump say about NATO funding and what is Article 5? And it goes in, it says, um, former U.S. President Donald Trump raised a storm of criticism from the White House and top Western officials for for suggesting he would not defend NATO allies who failed to spend enough on defense and would even encourage Russia to attack them. Here are the answers to some key questions about NATO. The comments by Trump who was running for another term in the White House in November and leading President Joe Biden in some polls um, and their their implications. 
Uh, then they go into what NATO is. It was funded, excuse me, founded in 1949 to counter the Soviet Union. Uh, with Cold War tensions rising, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, that's NATO, is a political and military alliance of countries from North America and Europe. Um, it says enshrined in, a, in Article 5 of its founding treaty is the principle of collective defense, the idea that an attack on one member is considered an attack on all of them. But see, Trump is basically saying, no, you pay or we don't play. Now, I don't know if Trump is BSing, but I don't think he's BSing on this one. Now, I'll, I'll tell you when I think Trump is BSing. On this one, I don't think he's BSing. Plus, it's a part of prophecy. It says, uh, Revelation tell you that the, the beast shall hate the whore. And what is the beast? Uh, NATO and the EU. That system. Okay. And what, what is the whore? America. The, the U.S. of A. All right. A great whore. Um, but it says here, it says NATO takes decisions by consequent, uh, by mm, consensus. NATO takes decisions by consensus. But the political and military strength of the United States means that it is by far the most powerful country in the alliance. See, it's an alliance. And what Trump is threatening to do is break up that alliance. This is why I follow Trump. This is why I watch him so closely. Okay? I watch this guy. I watch his moves because I know that, in my opinion, I believe he's that guy. He's the, he's the guy that said that we need a track and trace system at the border. What does that sound like? That sounds like the mark of the beast. That sounds like the implement, uh, implementation of the RFID microchip. And he's the guy that's talking about breaking away from NATO or not helping NATO, NATO allies uh, if they don't pay up. So he's causing, even with his words, he's causing a stir. And, you know, he could be the one to really get things popping. We may be closer than what we know. Um, anyways, uh, let me see if there is there anything else I want to get in this article here. Um, it says NATO currently has 31 members, most of them European nations, plus the United States and Canada. And then they go on to name uh, some more. But it, I want to get this part. It says, what did Trump say about NATO? As U.S. president from 2017 to 2021, Trump often lambasted NATO and members such as Germany accusing them of not paying enough for their own defense and relying on Washington, which is basically America, to protect them. He openly questioned the collective defense principle. Other U.S. administrations have also accused Europeans of not spending enough on, enough on defense, um, but less uh, strident in less strident uh, terms. Trump took his criticism to a new level at a campaign rally on Saturday in Conway, South Carolina, when he recounted what he said was a conversation with the president of a big country. And he said, this is what he said in the quote, well, sir, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? Trump quoted the unnamed leader as saying, and then this is what Trump said. Trump said in, in a quote, you didn't pay, you're delinquent. And the guy said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. This is what Trump said. In fact, I would encourage them, meaning Russia, to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay, Trump said. Barak Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. You know? 
Barakatha Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. This is what we wanted. You know, this is why I want this guy back in the White House. Because if nothing else, he's going to stir shit up. He's going to get things popping. He's going to he's going to be the guy with all these little nigglets running around, breaking in the shit, smash and grab, breaking in the cars. He's going to be the one to bring Jacob's trouble. I believe that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But that's just, you know, he's that guy, man. Prophecy has to be fulfilled. You know, take somebody with the balls to go in there and just say, you know, hey, you know, let's do this. I believe he could be that guy. Um, But uh, it says here, Trump has often accused other NATO members of not paying their dues, giving the impression that the alliance is like a club with membership fees. Now, check this out. But NATO operates differently. It has some common funds to which all members contribute, but the vast bulk of its strength comes from members own national defense spending to maintain forces and buy arms that can also be used by NATO. All right. So this is, this is a beautiful thing, man. Don't take this lightly. This is a beautiful thing. This is something to look out for. Like I say all the time, things you want to look out for, you want to look out for this technology, you know, like this Neuralink, and all these other um, chips, because China has their own version of the of the Neuralink, the brain chip. Okay, you want to look out for things like that. You want to look out for the economy to crash. Okay. Um. Civil war. Okay. Um, martial law, things like that. But also, you're looking for the the breaking up of you know, the split between the U.S. and NATO because the beast is going to hate the whore. All right? So this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. This is not to be slept on. This is this is crucial because it's telling you the times that we're in, showing you how close we are. Okay, this is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> if you understand scripture, you understand prophecy. Um. You love to hear the man that's uh, potentially going to be the, the the next president of the United States um, openly criticizing NATO. You want to hear that. <laughs> you love to hear that, as a matter of fact. So right quick, I want to get this. This is, um, Let's get Matthews 12 and 25. It says, And Yahweh Shah knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Um, and, and right now, even the U.S., you know, the, the kingdom, the mighty kingdom that it is, is being divided right now. Uh, there was a poll recently. Uh, I believe it said that um, the U.S. split 50-50. Um, as far as political views are concerned, something like that, something along those lines. That can help me out if if um if you know what I'm talking about. Um, but it's it's completely divided. Um. Also, uh, with dealing with the border, how are they going to handle the border? Um. Crime, crime. You know, some people. You know, half of America wants prison reform and the other half wants to lock these prisoners up for a very long time. They're just divided on every issue. And that's what you want to see. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but he said every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. <laughs> and if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? It won't stand. It won't stand. And but the little the little dum dums they're not paying attention and they don't realize how divided this country is. They they they're fully completely unaware. They're too busy worried about whether they made you know money off the Super Bowl or Taylor Swift. You know that demon. 
You know, they they worried about, you know, did Usher brush up on Alicia Keys too much at the Super Bowl halftime show? Uh, what is Swiss Beast going to say? You know, what is Mike Epps going to do with, with Shannon Sharp? Man, you know, just stupid shit. Meanwhile, we're watching and praying and, and looking for these prophecies to be fulfilled. This is what matters to the men of the Lord. Uh, Revelation 17 and 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, um, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, um, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and all of these uh, nations have committed fornication with America. Um, they've all uh, bought into the American system, the American way. Even the uh, Moabites over there in China try to be all Americanized. Japan, all you, you go all over the world. You know, they try to be as close to like America. And it was the same thing back in the ancient times with Rome. Um, but even more so with America, right? It is, they just, you know, they try to try to have that American swag. Whatever restaurants are in America, they try to have it over there too. Okay. But it says, uh, oh, and, and, and Americans, uh, excuse me, the U.S. Uh, military has bases all over the world. Okay. They've set up shop all over the world. So all of these nations have committed fornication with this whore. Okay. U.S. of America, USA, United States of America. Uh, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit in, in the, into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having um, seven heads and ten horns. Okay, that's that beast. Uh, uh, ten horns, NATO and the EU. It says, and the woman was arrayed with, excuse me, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay. Um, this is, this, this is a, this country, this nation is a, is a filthy, abominable whore. Just nasty. You think about it. The U S is Babylon. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nineveh, uh, hell, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, you name it, man. It's all of those things, <clears throat> you know, the Roman Empire all over again. It's all of those things, man. Just a nasty, filthy, disgusting place. And it's got to be burnt up. It's the only way. You know, it's the only way. Um, But it says in the ten horns, which thou sawest, this is the 16th verse, it says, and the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. The ten horns, okay, those uh those European nations, uh, the NATO, they're gonna hate the whore, and this is why uh I love the fact that Trump is saying what he's saying out loud in the open, and it's so fitting that his name is Trump, because he's constantly <laughs> sounding the alarm. You know he can't keep his mouth shut. That's why I want that nigga back in office. He won't shut up. Even if he's BS and he's still running his damn mouth and letting things leak that shouldn't be leaked. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, he's fitting for these times. Um, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Okay, they're going to launch missiles on this bitch. <laughs> well, what Trump said, he's going to let uh, Russia do whatever they want to the, to the, 
to the NATO, uh, to his allies, to the supposed, the supposed allies that don't pay up. So how you think they're going to feel about America, especially with Trump in the White House talking shit? Because you know he's going to be doing it. You know how he is. Okay? You know how he is. You may have forgotten because it's been, it's been a while. Okay? But it says, for the, for our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. What is his will? What is his will? Destruction to this place. That's his will. He did the same thing with Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's the Lord's will. Man's going to love the Lord, right? The heart of the kings are in the hands of the Lord. Or, or, you know, roughly paraphrasing. You know what I'm trying to say, right? So this is the Lord's will. I'm going to read that again. It says, In the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For Yahweh by Shem Yahweh have put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of Yahweh shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Okay. It's beautiful times that we're living in. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Um, I'm loving it. I hope it continues. I hope we fast track. We are hastening the day of the Lord. Okay, we are hastening the day of the Lord. We are praying for the destruction of this bitch. Okay, and if you get mad for me calling, you know, the United States of America a bitch, well, the Lord called it a whore. Okay, so get out of your feelings. This place is going to be utterly destroyed. Okay, that's what happened to wicked kingdoms in the past. They, they look at the plagues that he sent upon Egypt. Look at what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. He hardened uh, Pharaoh's heart just so he could, you know, bring destruction, just so he could bring those plagues to Egypt. Okay, the Lord do what the hell he want to do. And you need to understand that. You need to know and realize that the Lord is going to bring judgment. <laughs> Serious judgment. Okay. So now is the time to seek the Lord. And I say it all the time. Seek him while he may be found. There's going to come a famine of the word. You know, that, that time is coming as well. Make sure you get this word in you. Make sure you get, don't, don't sit there and wait until shit hit the fan, all hell break loose. You go, uh, uh, man, I'm going I'm to find out what them Israelites were talking about, man. That, you know, this, this thing kind of heating up. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's heating up. And them nuclear missiles going to heat your ass up. It's, it's getting real, man. And this nigga Trump is only some months away from being reelected. You know, if they, if they let him make it that far. Even if he don't get in the White House, the prophecy is still going to be fulfilled. Okay? Because the Lord will put it on another uh, president to, to start some shit. It doesn't matter. We're too close to the end. Shalom, is Brother Yashima Zakar from the Israelite Times Report, IsraeliteTimes.com. Upon my watch, all praises are definitely due to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessings to all the brothers spread across the four corners of the earth. Pushing the truth and sincerity. I'm in a bit of a foul mood, but I'm gonna try to keep it clean. Um, you know, I watched this video of this Northern Tribe chick. I don't know what tribe she belongs to, but she's a Northern Tribe chick. I believe she's an Ephraimite, and she was talking about how she's young and um she didn't want to uh, submit to one man because <laughs> she wants to get trains ran on her and get, you know, man seed blasted all over her face. You know, not to be too, you know, descriptive, but you understand. 
Um, and then there was a bunch of other things. That was That's not even, you know, that's just a side note. But just all the wickedness and the folly and, and um, just seeing Jake being stupid. Um, breaking in the stores and that's happening all over America. And they're fully unaware. <clears throat> they're completely unaware. That's what I meant to say of what's getting ready to happen to them. The times of Jacob trouble is coming and these things must need be. So, you know, my, my natural side, just look at them like they're stupid. Like what the hell is wrong with you? You dumbass. Don't you see what this is getting ready to turn into that the accuser of thy brother Esau is about to roll up on you. He's about to use this footage of you and um, he's going to roll up on you. But the, the spiritual side is saying, well, the Lord has blinded them. He made their hearts fat. You know, he's he's close their mind he's closed their ears and their eyes so they can't see they can't hear all right but we're supposed to warn the people regardless and the election have received it but the rest were blinded the election the elect the lord's elect will receive it and the rest of you two-third stupid niggas are going to get caught up in the wrath of the most high Right, we say it's Jacob's trouble, and we know Esau is going to do his thing, but really, it's the Lord. So the Lord chose you for destruction. Okay, and I didn't even mean to lead off with that, but you know, it's just the mood that I'm in, because I have um this uh I guess you can say this story here from Twitter. Your boy Elon Musk, Mister Neuralink. Mr. MOTB himself, Mr. Mark of the Beast himself, the man that's, uh, you know, with the help of the military industrial complex and the small hatters in the background, the ruling uh, elites of Esau in the background. This, this is what he posted on Twitter, which is now X, by the way. I know it's called X now, but I still call it Twitter. Um, he's been p pretending to be fighting against <clears throat> the elites and supposed to be a man of the people, but I already knew it was BS from the beginning. And if you understand the, the trickery of these heathen nations, Esau, Edom, especially, then you know that, you know, Elon Musk was full of it from the beginning. Right. But um, he writes on Twitter. The only action needed to solve climate change is a carbon tax. <clears throat> now, see, you have certain people that think that this guy is a hero, which is absolute stupidity. And it really speaks to the level. Or, or the lack of intelligence of not just Jake, because we always get on these black niggas. These these uh, stupid Latinos and the, and the Native Americans who trust Esau and his government, like the dumbasses that they are. But you know who else is a dumbass? These these so-called white people, these Edomites. They're stupid because on the on the Christian patriot conservative side. These dumbasses really thought that Elon Musk was a man of the people. Now he was on their side, right? Just because he bought a goddamn uh, platform, a social media platform, Twitter, and that he supposedly allowed freedom of speech. However, this man, and this is what he says, the only action needed to solve climate change is a carbon tax. That carbon tax is going to lead to the mark of the beast. That's all you have to understand. All of that is going right along with the mark of the beast. The climate check, the, excuse me, the climate tax, the social credit score, 
all of that is leading up to the mark of the beast. It's all a part of that mark of the beast system. Okay? So anyways, he says, um, we should not, for example, impose draconian laws on farmers <laughs> or make citizens uncomfortable by limiting air conditioner usage, keep tax revenue constant, but shift it to tax uh, what is probably bad, CO2, just like alcohol and cigarettes, and tax more than fruits and vegetables. So this is, this is Esau Edom being slick, sly, and saying, look, I'm in favor of climate tax, but it's not a, a draconian law. Now, he's playing up to these uh, Christian conservatives to say, look, my version of a carbon of a carbon tax is different. Understand. This is all leading into the market of beast system because they want to track and trace your every move. And, and part of that uh, <clears throat> excuse of the rollout of the market of beast is going to be climate change. They, oh, we got to track and trace everyone. They're letting off too much, uh, you know, CO2, you know, too much uh, carbon. You know, the, uh, we, we need to reduce, you know, pollution and all of that. Uh, so what Esau did was he created the problem, and now he's going to come to you with the solution. Right? But we know that this devil has always got tricks up his sleeve. We know. And then they turn it into a political e issue. Let me get this right quick. And um, it's from a website called Electric. And I guess it's a uh, liberal, uh, democratic, you know, base, you know, one of those high tech liberal uh, websites it says Elon Musk introduces his new right wing fans to a carbon tax goes as well as you would expect it right so th this is how stupid these Edomites are they, they you know you whenever one of these uh, dumbass uh, liberals say something that's slightly right wing leaning all the dumbass uh Edomite conservatives they get all you know happy and they start cheering to see see even the liberals are agreeing with us and then when the opposite happens and one of these uh right wing conservatives supposedly says something that's kind of left leaning or leaning you know more to the left for the liberals then the liberals do the same thing see 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 even one of your conservative men are saying see this is all stage theater all these people are fake phony okay and and the reason why i brought this up is because you even have these damn these stupid two-third niggas that believe in this shit that are falling for this okie doke Getting in the middle of Esau's war. Let Esau go against Esau. Let Esau destroy his damn self. You know, we know Yahweh Shai is going to destroy his ass. But we, you know, use common sense. You don't have no business getting in the middle of Esau versus Esau confrontations. Right? It says here, um, Ecclesiastes 12 and 10, Never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Okay? You, cause I seen niggas on Twitter praising Elon Musk. Oh, he, you know, he brought back free speech. No, nigga. What they're doing is they're collecting data on your black ass. They want to know who's who. That's all they're doing. You go on Twitter on X and you start posting your thoughts. All they're doing is collecting that data. <laughs> you understand? Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast 
wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. Okay? This is all leading to the mark of the beast. It's all tied in. See, the, what they got you, you, you idiots doing, they have you arguing over climate change, the border crisis, the smash and grabs, you know, niggas running into these stores and stealing shit, break-ins, you know, the, 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 the car break-ins that are happening mainly in places like California and, you know, Los Angeles, San Francisco. They have you arguing and debating over it. But the truth is, all of these subjects, these topics of, of discussion are leading to one thing, and that's the mark of the beast. Oh, you want to stop the border crisis? Implement the microchip. That way we can uh, track and trace everyone. You want to reduce carbon, reduce everyone's carbon footprint? Introduce the microchip. That way we can track and trace everyone. You want to stop niggas from breaking into your stores and stealing your shit? Introduce the microchip. That'll stop niggas from breaking in your stores. Because we can track and trace. All of the hot topic subjects of discussion, topics of discussion, they're all leading to the microchip. And that's what I've been trying to bring out. Oh, inflation's bad. People can't afford to pay rent anymore. Oh, introduce the microchip. All your funds will be on the microchip. All your money will be on your, your microchip. Oh, there's too much uh, fraud. There's too much uh, hacking going on. Right? Stolen uh, 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 accounts. Well, we introduced the microchip. That will stop people from being able to defraud you because the microchip is inside of you. You see, all roads lead to the microchip. If you understand the game that they're playing, right, you will see what this is leading up to. The microchip, the mark of the beast. Never trust thine enemy. I don't give a shit how humble he come to you. How nice. Was Bill Gates nice when he introduced that vax, when he introduced that jab? Sounded real nice. Oh, you know, we're doing this to, you know, stop grandma from dying. Remember? They said, oh, if you don't take the, the J-A-B, if you don't take the vax, if you don't take the shot, then... You could potentially cause grandma to die because she could catch the, you know, the virus. Remember 2020, 2021? Y'all don't remember? Y'all forgotten that fast? Well, that's the same thing they're going to do with the microchip, except it's going to be on a whole nother level. Proverbs 4, 16, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. That's your enemy. They won't, they won't go to sleep. Unless they plot it against you. Your, your enemy is up all night plotting against you. They've taken up a crafty counsel. They've taken a crafty counsel against you. While your dumb ass is worried about who's, who's winning the Super Bowl, how much money you put on the damn Super Bowl. And I hope all you niggas that bet on the Super Bowl lose your money. The hell with you, by the way. Okay? I'm just in that kind, that kind of a mood. The hell with this place. This place got to go. I saw somebody showed me something at work. And I don't, I don't mean to be too descriptive. And I, 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 man, I wanted to punch the phone. They showed me something at work. This tranny dude. Real shit. This is real. 
is uh I believe he's he's maybe suing <laughs> oh man his I guess it was his boyfriend his ex-boyfriend because it's it, it, again this is disgusting but I must say it his ex-boyfriend threw away his balls and what I mean by that is because when he had the surgery done the the tranny kept his kept his kept his balls and i guess his ex-boyfriend got mad at him when he broke up and threw away his balls so now he's like suing him or something this is the world we're living in like let, let you know again i'm sorry you know i had to this is the world we live in it and y'all think this place got you think this place going to continue you think the lord is going to let this shit keep going you got your goddamn mind You would be calling the Most High a liar if you believe that this place is going to continue on. You have to, you have to damn mind. This place has to go. This place got to go. I'm off topic. This place got to go, man. This is the type of shit. And I'm only introduced to this because my coworker is on social media. So I get to see all of the craziness that I don't see on my own. Because she be bringing up stuff and I'll be like, what the hell are you talking about? You wouldn't be. This place got, look, this place is worse than what you know. Because we that are in this truth, we're separated, we're set apart from this world. So we we sort of we we kind of stay because we we focus on on the things of the heavenly Father. We go to work. We we you know those of you that have family, you you tend to your family, right? And you you leave this world behind, right? So a lot of stuff we miss, and because I, I you know I used to work the night shift, so I didn't see a lot of this craziness. I wasn't on social media. I wasn't on no damn Instagram. But my coworker is showing me stuff that even, and I know how wicked this place is, but even me, I'm going, what the fuck? What the hell is that? Throughout the day, I'll just be, I'll be like, what the hell is going on? This place is worse than what, I, you know, I saw these little nigglets. I call them little nigglets. My dad hates it when I talk like that. You know, <laughs> he don't understand my uh, uh, my uh, anger towards my own people. But um, these little nigglets on a train, skipping down like little fairies, like Peter Pan. These were these were teenage boys, right? Now, when I was a teenager, you know, I was kind of rough. I ain't gonna lie, I was kind of rough. And me and my crew, we used to walk through. People moved the hell out the way. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not glorifying it. I'm not saying that that's a good thing. It's not. Because we was doing some bullshit. Now, I wasn't getting in trouble like that. It's just that, you know, we had a rough. I wasn't, I wasn't one of them little thug niggas. I wasn't that. Because my, my dad, my mom and my dad raised me better than that. But we did have a rough look. So when, people, when we walked through, people moved. These little niggas walking around looking like they got their, their little sister's pants on. I mean, I'm not talking about like it ain't even skinny jeans. These were literally like little girl pants. But these are supposed to be the, the 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 tough niggas. But they got on their little girls, they got on their little sister's pants on. All this uh I don't know, wild colors, pink, yellow. Uh, green mixed with purple and and I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's just like the alphabet alphabet flag. But they're not then they're, they're supposed to be the the hood niggas. And they running down a damn escalator, but they were running, but 
the way they were running, it looked like they was goddamn uh like Peter Pan or some shit. Like Men in Tights. The movie Men in Tights. Like they were skipping to like was skippity skippity skippity. But they were they were trying to have like a rough face, like a mean mugging face. Like they supposed to be the That's how confused this this place is. The the supposed hood niggas are fruit cups and weirdos. And I'm looking at these niggas and I'm going, oh, hell no. They can't be the future of this place. This place got to go. They were just as confused. They were trying to look tough with skin tight little girly pants on and all this weird colors and shit. And I'm looking at these little niggas and I'm going, they got to be 15, 16 years old. When I was 15, 16, nigga, I was black Tims, black jeans, black hoodie, <laughs> nigga, move. These niggas are skippity, 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 skippity. I'm like, what the hell is this? Again, I'm not saying we were right for, for, for acting the way we acted. But damn, man, at least we were, we were, we were young men, you know, trying to, you know how you're you young man, you're trying to show off your toughness or whatever. I guess they were trying to do the same thing with the mean mugging, but they had on girly pants and goddamn, I, I don't even know what they had on. It was like flowery colored shit. Looked like they raided their, their sister's closet. I said, this place got to go, man. They can't be the future. This place got to be destroyed before these little niggas become uh uh your, your 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 doctors and your lawyers or your or your your teachers. Lord forbid, man. This can't be no. <laughs> this place got to go. I'm sorry, I went off. <laughs> I went off. I'm just, man, what the fuck did I look at? This place, this place got to go. I'm sorry. Uh, let me get back. Uh, damn. I was, <laughs> if y'all saw, if y'all saw what I saw, man. Oh, my goodness. And they were like, literally like Peter Pan. <laughs> but he's supposed to be the toughness. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let me get uh, let me get let me get back to Elon Musk and his uh, Neuralink and his BS. Um, because what I was getting into was how Jay. Uh, cause I you know I'm on Twitter right. I look I do look on Twitter because there's a lot of good news. Uh, I I guess you say the news feed on there sometimes is something that I want to look at. Instagram and TikTok, I, I can't, you know, it's too much, it's too much bullshit. Uh, but um, Elon, is, you know, you got Jake, you got Israelites. Yeah, hey, man, you know, that guy, Elon Musk, man, he really going up against the elites. And you got this guy, Alex Jones, who praises Elon Musk. Both of these guys are working with the same people, man. The small hatters. The damn small hatters, man, who rule them and tell them what to do and tell them what uh, to put out there. And they put out half troops. But I, I get, you know, irritated and vexed when I see niggas talking about, man, Elon, I'm telling you, man, you know, he going to change things for us. Like you black, stupid nigga, you. The man introduced a damn brain chip to control your goddamn mind and you over here talking about he's fighting against the wicked elite. It's about time we had somebody step up to the plate. Black nigga conservatives. You ain't got no business putting nobody over you anyway. You're not supposed to be picking a damn. If you in this truth, you got no business picking a damn political party, period. 
period. You don't put no no king of a of a, of another nation over top of you. Period. Uh, Elon Musk, man, I'm telling you, he the that that guy. Psalms fifty-eight and ten. The righteousness, excuse me. Psalms fifty-eight and ten. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. And I can't wait for that day, man. I'm sick of Esau and his false flags, his false narratives, the way he prop our people up on TV and make us look, the way he picked the worst of our people to put on TV just to make us look horrible. And then our people doing the bidding of Esau, the divine nine, the uh, boule, all these boot kissing, these boot kissing ass niggas. I hate you with a perfect hatred. And I don't give a damn how you feel about it. You don't like it. Take it up with the most high. To hell with you. You are not my people. Well, you supposed to love your brother. We all Israelite. There's the Israel of the Israel and there's the Israel of the Most High. Okay? David said, King David said, Do if not I hate them that hate thee. That you that hate the Most High, I hate you. Period. Point blank, period, man. Point blank. So Psalms 58 and 10, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked so that a man shall say verily. There is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a, a power that judge, judges in the earth. OK, because uh, the fool has said in, in his heart that there is no power, there is no God. And you got niggas walking around like that today. Right? They don't believe in the most high power. They believe in Elon Musk. Okay? Because believe it or not, I know I went way the hell off the topic and I, I tried, but you know, whatever. It happened. You know, the spirit worked like that. Whatever. It it you know, it is what it is. But when I see these conservative niggas on social media boosting up some damn Elon Musk, it shows you how far gone we are. You got niggas uh, supporting the Democrats. They the vote the blue no matter the who. Vote blue no matter who. Because y'all remember when Biden was running in 2020? You had these stupid niggas running around talking about, I'm riding with Biden. That was the thing. I'm riding with Biden. Now look at your stupid black ass. You over here complaining about gas price. You over here complaining about uh, uh, rent, <laughs> inflation, food costs, people on TikTok crying because everything costs too damn much. You don't have enough money at the end of the month to do shit. Even Edomites are crying. They want Trump back. Now, what the hell is Trump going to do for you? You stupid niggas. And you stupid Edomites, you stupid, you people as a whole, man, this place got to go. Just dumb as hell. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But the, the righteous. See, this is the, the vexing part. The vexing part is watching the stupidity of people. The beautiful part of it is we know that this has to end soon because the, the, the Lord's word, first of all, none of these shall fail. Right. The scriptures tell you that none of these shall fail when the, the, the word of the Lord does not go out void. OK, it doesn't go out void, period. The Lord is going to perform whatever, whatever he says, whatever he speaks. It will come to pass, period. And he's spoken it already. The great mother of harlots, Babylon, the great 
mother of harlots uh, will be destroyed. The, the virgin daughter of Babylon, excuse me, will be destroyed. Period. That's happening. So we know that we've reached our end and we see the mark of the beast is here. So we rejoice in there and in, in, in that uh, aspect, right? And, and we rejoice when we see these prophecies coming to pass. But what vexes us is that we have to live in this shit. We have to deal with this shit and deal with the stupidity on a daily basis. We have to deal with this stupidity and this nonsense and you can't escape it. There's no escape. We have to deal with it. We literally have to just grin our teeth. We're in prison. Here it is. You don't walk up to the truth. You, you, uh, all about the truth. Your, your spirit is, is calling on the Lord. You, you, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm, you know, please, Lord, be with me. You sending up prayers. Take not your, your Holy Spirit away from me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. Sometimes, you, you know, you're just in the spirit. You know, you, you're going about your daily, your, your, your daily walk, and you're in the spirit, and you're sending up prayers. And then you get a monkey nigga just why you act different? Because I'm not a monkey nigga like you. That's why I act different. I'm not swinging from a tree. Dumbass. You understand? That's what vexes us. The filthy conversation of these people, man. We're vexed in our spirit. Our hope is in Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh, Shah. Because we know that he ain't going to allow this to continue. Lord said he's angry with the wicked every day. Every day. So we know when Yahweh, Shah come through, he's coming through to wreck shop, to wreck havoc. On this place. He's not coming. He's not coming here to play. He's not coming here for play play. Okay. This place will be destroyed. Finally. It will happen. We just got to hold on man. We just got to hold on. We got to hold on. We got to hold on. We got to fight. We, this is a fight. This is a spiritual fight battle and we have to fight you are in a war you are not in peaceful times you're in a war okay the lord cut the time short for the very elect's sake for the sake of the elect the times are being cut short understand that that's how dire this thing is you got to hold on so, yeah, you might think to yourself, well, I believe I'm of the elect. Okay, good. It's good that you have that hope. But you still must make your calling and election sure. You got to run. You got to run in your mind as if you don't know if you're of the elect and keep it like that. Keep that, th keep that thought in your head. Let me, let me keep moving. Just, you know, I don't know, man. You know, you have to keep it like that. Because anytime you get a nigga just getting into their head, well, I know I'm going to make it. That nigga going to get plucked out. Okay? It's like going to war. When you're in the battlefield and um, you go into the war saying, well, I know I'm going back home. You don't know you're going back home, nigga. There's been people that, you know, military, quick, quick story. There are people that went in, you know, Afghanistan, Iraq. I know I'm coming back home to my wife. And that motherfucker got blown up. Excuse me. Ooh, sorry. Slipped up. Said damn F. There's been people like that in the military. It's real talk. I know I'm coming back home to my wife. They end up getting blown up in a damn um, convoy. Okay? It happens. You have to stay in a military mindset. Prove yourself. Constantly 
ready to prove yourself to the Lord that you be worthy, you be made worthy to make it, man. Nobody can run this race for you. So, well, yeah, when they come through with this carbon tax, uh, this track and trace system, 15 minute, 15 minute cities. Okay. And they, and they start pushing hell because it's going to come quick. It's going to come real quick. It's going to be, it's going to be overnight. Remember the pandemic. Remember how everything just changed real quick. It's going to be like that. You have to be prayed up and ready to endure that. Endure the ridicule. Endure people talking about you. People talking bad about you. Saying this and that about you. You got to be ready for that in your mind. In your spirit. You got to be ready for it. You're going to need those precepts. Okay. Matter of fact, hold on. Speaking of which, let me see. Um, Damn, I didn't even get what I wanted to get. I ran it. Um, but I do want to get, um, let me get this. Um, but, but yeah, I want to say, um, understand what you're going through and why you're going through it. When you stop, you stop remembering what you're in this thing for, you're going to lose hope. You're going to lose sight. Okay. Um, okay. Let me get this. Is Revelations 12 and 10. Okay. Now, the brothers, you know, the scripture comes out, not maybe not all the time, but often enough. But listen, listen to this. 12 and 10, Revelation. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now come, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power and the power of his help, Mashiach. Okay, the Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. I've been meditating on that today at work they love not their lives until the death what is what is what, is, what does that mean that means that you don't feel like this life here is worth selling out when that hour of temptation comes and if you don't do this, then we going you know, you we we gonna do this to you. We're gonna do that to you. You have to be in a position where you really hate your life. I know that, you know, that you gotta hate your life. I hate this shit. Point blank period. But like, fuck this shit. You gotta have that attitude. I hate this shit. I hate this damn place. That's how you're supposed to be. And sometimes it'll feel like, damn, man, this can't, this can't be how it's supposed to be. No, 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 no. That's how it's supposed to be. Because that's, that's preparing you for what's to come. That hour of temptation. When you say, they say, well, if you don't bend the knee, if you don't bow down to this system, we're going to take your life. You can say, you know what? Go fuck yourself. I don't love my life any damn way. Right? That's how you got to be. You got to have that attitude. And I'll be damned if I don't have. It. I hate this damn place, man. More than you can, more than I say, really. I hate it more than you, you can understand. I wake up and I curse this place out. I'm not exaggerating. I'm dead ass serious. I hate this place. Dead ass. <laughs> And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the, of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. 
Because we died already. We died already. We died already. We died from this damn place, man. Okay? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, Yahweh Shah, Mashiach, and by the word of of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea because <laughs> you know me right i had to at least once <laughs> for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that his time that he had but a short time. Yeah, I could say he knows that his time is short, but it says he knoweth that he had but a short time. Right? Now, I focus on that part so much, but I really do wanted to get into that. Um, they love not their lives unto the death. I went way over my time um, on this, and I went way off topic. But, hey, I just felt the need to put that out there. You know, blessed be Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. You know, Barakatha Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. That's what it's all about. You know, love not your life unto death, man. Use the world, don't abuse the world. Live, be peaceful amongst all men. If it be possible, be peaceful, you know, I don't just go around slapping the shit out of people. I, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, be peaceful. Right? Take the low. Somebody think they better than you? Okay, cool. You better than me. All right, take the low. Sometimes a nigga might not even have as much as you. And they think they better than you. You don't have to argue with them. Say, nigga, you ain't got what I got. No, no. You just, okay, all right, whatever. Let them have that. Let them have that little feel-good moment. Because a nigga need that. Niggas are stupid like that. Nigga, man, my, look, at my, look at my shoe. Look at my watch. Look at my hat. Look at my, look at my jacket, nigga. Okay, nigga, you can have that, monkey. Stupid nigga, you. You can have that. Take the low. All right. You ain't got to brag. You know, some brothers are blessed, man. Some brothers are blessed with things and, you know, we, because we live a simple life, they look at us and they think we ain't got shit. We might have more than what they got. They don't know. Because they're stupid. And they're carnally minded. And you must remember that their aim is to bring you down to the carnal mind. We have to stay spiritual. Okay? We have to stay spiritually minded. But at the same time, understand that these same niggas, when that time come, okay, they're going to want to be spiritual then because they're going to be calling on the Lord. Whatever, what, however they want to say it, they're going to be calling on the Lord. So, yeah, their time is coming. You take the low. You hate your life unto the death. You continue to pray fast. Send up prayers. Ask for more knowledge, more understanding. While the rest of this world is getting ready for the NBA Finals, Super Bowl number whatever, whatever, another block party, Independence Day, you know, July 4th, whatever stupid ass event is coming on, is going on next, you send your treasures up to the heavens. You're building on something. They ain't building on nothing. And when it's over, they won't have nothing either. 